Hi there, my name is Randy McEntee. I'm a co-founder of Logic.tv and a flame artist at the Department of External Services. Welcome to Logic Academy. In today's video, we're gonna be getting you set up with machine learning time warp on Flame. Before we dive in, thanks to Autodesk for sponsoring this video. The best place to start is the machine learning time warp mega thread at forum.logic.tv. It's a huge thread with all the information that you'd ever want about the tool all in one place. But the good news is you don't have to read the whole thing. So just start with the releases, which is the first thing that you can click on. Okay, now we're at the GitHub release page and you can see at the very top is the latest version. So we're gonna go download that. And in the meantime, if you wanna deep dive on the tool and uh, Andrew's background, check out Logic Live episode number 45, green screen from Runway ML and the ML Time Warp tool for Flame. It's a good deep dive on the science behind the tools, how it works, and some other features on how to use it. Now this tool will work on both Mac and Linux. I'm gonna demonstrate the Linux install only because depending on your hardware, there might be an extra step or two you need to perform. Now keep in mind, the NVIDIA support on the Linux side means much better performance. You can expect render times in the two to four frames per second range. And on the Mac side, because there's no GPU support and the program is limited to CPU only, you can expect render times of between 30 and 50 seconds per frame. So on the Linux side, two to four frames per second. On the Mac side, many, many more times that in seconds per frame. So keep that in mind. Here it is my downloads folder. I'm just gonna copy it to uh, my opt Autodesk shared Python folder. And that's this here. So that's opt Autodesk shared Python. And we're just gonna copy it there. Once it's in your Python folder, you can right click on it, extract here, and now there's a Python folder, a Python file inside ready to launch Flame with. So go back to Python. We'll just leave the tarball there for now. I'm gonna go launch Flame. First time you launch Flame after dropping the Python file in the opt Autodesk shared Python, you have to install it. So now we're just gonna unpack. And it's gonna do its thing. Here's a test clip. Now, it's important to know that if you are using an Ampere graphics card, either an RTX A4000, A5000, or A6000, you need to take a few more steps. That's because this tool was originally designed for CentOS 7.6 and CUDA series graphics cards. So if you have an RTX 4000, an RTX 5000, an RTX 6000, or an RTX 8000, then this tool will work straight away upon download. But if you have an Ampere series or A4000, A5000, or A6000, you'll need to do a few more steps. And let's do those steps right here. If you are using a CUDA series card, you don't care about this. If you are using an Ampere series, then you will. So the first thing we need to do is install console because console is not installed on CentOS 8 by default. So I'm just gonna copy that. Then we're gonna copy this, install console, that'll take a minute. Great, now we're gonna CD into the uh, Flame Time Warp folder. So for me, that was installed at Flame Randy Downloads. I'm sorry, Home Randy there. So CD into Flame Time Warp. And in here is a bundle folder. We're gonna CD into the bundle folder. When we list 
that contents of that file, there's an init env file. So we're just gonna copy this, which is a dot slash. So dot slash init, and it creates this little console window for us. So within this console window, we're going to run this command. This is a different version of PyTorch, which is compatible with Ampere cards. It's a two gig file, so it may take a few minutes. And it's all done. Exit. You can exit this root shell. Launch flame. Here's a test shot. Let's slow it down by 50%. Here's how it works in Flame. And you can see Flame struggles with this shirt detail. and these crossing of objects here. This is a tricky shot to optical flow, and you can see the problems associated with the built-in time warp on flame. Right click, time warp ML. And let's say we just wanna slow it down by a fraction. So we'll just pick half. Go ahead and click create. New terminal window pops up, launches the tool, and initializes the time warp. When it's done, the clip is imported automatically. Keep an eye out on the incoming clip's color space. Depending on your preferences, it may need to be adjusted. Here is the ML time warp. And you can see it is pretty spectacular. So there's no problem with this detail early on. There's no problem with this crossing. And I mean, there might be the tiniest amount, but it sure does pass the squint test. This original flame version could take could take a day or two to fix with all the problems. The hair, the skin, the cloth, the lights, especially these textures bouncing and boiling. So this ML time warp is a huge improvement. So that's one way of using the tool. Another way of using the tool is with the soft effect of a time warp. This is 50%. And once that's there, you can just sit right click time warp ML, and then time warp from flames time warp effect. So what that does is that takes the time warp at the soft effect level and applies it to the clip. And again, you hit create. It's gonna render the new duration. Export the clip as an EXR sequence. And here it is. One other way you can use a tool is to make up in between frames. So here's an example. I've just simulated a problem on this frame with a big paint stroke. So I'm gonna create Take this one clip. This is the frame immediately preceding that bad frame. And I'm just gonna time warp it to 
and drag it as a source. I'll take the next good frame, time warp that to zero, make that also three frames and drag that out. So now I'll select both clips by control clicking, time warp ML, create fluid morph, And this will create a new in-between frame so we can patch our original sequence. Get rid of these two, now you can see the difference. So now, if we play it from the top, we've successfully removed that bogus frame. There you have it. If you have any questions or comments, look me up on the forums at forum.logic.tv. If you enjoyed this Logic Academy, let us know. And if there's something you'd like to see, be sure to drop us a line. I'm Randy McEntee, and you're watching Logic.